Hey everyone, it's Tyler and Michelle Stroik from Universal Rackets, and today we're going to be going over our favorite drills that we use during our drilling sessions for the third shot drop. If you stay tuned for this whole video, we're going to show you so many different drills that you can use to work on your third shots. Why is the third shot drop so essential? Because it brings you and your partner to the kitchen and you need to have a great third shot drop to become an advanced pickleball player. So if you're a beginner or an intermediate, watch closely and learn how to master the third shot drop. Yes, and regardless, if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level player, these are going to be the drills for you to do. Should we get started? Yes. Let's go. Okay, so first off, I think what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start off very beginner and then we're going to work our way up in our drill progression to advanced. So first off, why do we want to utilize a third shot drop in pickleball? We want to use it so that the opponent has to lift the ball from low to high and it gives us a chance to move up to the kitchen as the ball drops into the opponent's kitchen. Yeah, I feel like so many players, they have the drive when they first start picking up pickleball, but that drop really gets your opponents to hit up on the ball instead of hit down, which is a golden ticket to get them up to the net or to the kitchen. Yes, and for a moment when I first started playing as well, I didn't understand why I need, like my coach always like, use a third shot drop. I'm like, no, it's why? way more fun to wail the ball at the other people, smash it as hard as I can. But once you do finally cave and decide that you want to learn the shot, you will become an, an, like way better of a player if you use the drop shot in pickleball. Yes, and I feel like the faster you hit your drives, the faster the ball is going to come back. When you hit the drops, you have time to get up to the kitchen, which is way different than a typical drive. And you're creating time for yourself and you are neutralizing your opponents in a place that they can attack you if you have a great third shot drop. And another big thing on working on the drop or trying to learn the drop or even get very consistent with the drop is that you need to drill over and over and over again. You're not going to get a good third shot drop by just going out and playing and trying to work on it. You have to work on behind the scenes technically mm -hmm. by utilizing these drills that we're gonna go over now. You have to be doing to it do off it. the court before you can ever do it successfully on the court. And even for myself, regardless of how good I am with my third shot drop, if I take time off of pickleball, say for two, three weeks, I need to go through these drills to refresh myself and get myself back into, we could say, sync with those drops. So regardless of your level, utilizing these drills is going to help you a ton. And as you get better, your points are gonna get longer and you're gonna have the ability to take a fifth shot drop. So that's not just the third shot and the point, it becomes the fifth shot, the seventh shot. And when you start to play defense, you can hit a drop shot at any point on the court to reset your team and get yourself back in position to eventually win the point. Yes. And as I mentioned, we're going to start very beginner and then we're going to work our way up, okay? So at Universal Rackets, when all of our instructors teach players how to hit a third shot drop, they do this drill to start out, okay? So the easiest place to hit a third shot drop to start is at the transition zone. The further back you are, the more difficult it is going to be able to execute the drop properly. So what you're going to do is your partner is going to be back there you're going to get the person working on the drop here in the kitchen. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to toss the ball into my opponent's kitchen. I want you to think that it's like a bean bag. It's like a cornhole toss when you toss the ball. You want your body facing forward, you want your palm facing down, and you want to extend through your arm and your shoulder. So again, this is the first drill that players work on when they're trying to learn their third shot drop. And Michelle's just going to hit it back to me and just be comprehensive. She's just trying to work with me so I can get a ton of reps. Good. Here we are. Let's do three more. And if you're thinking about beanbag toss, the game cornhole, where's your target? The target board is going to be as shallow as you can get it in the court. Because once oh. it's shallow in the court, that means I can't come in here and hit it out of the air. The deeper your drop lands, the more tackable it is. And when you do this drill, you need to do it with intention. Of course, you can make this ball in the kitchen by just going like this and having it go. But I really want you to simulate contact out in front, extending through your arm and shoulder. You're getting your legs into it as well. So once I'm done, Michelle's going to go back. She's going to now toss the ball up in the air and she's going to get her third shot drop going. She's getting it. Good. And you always want to make sure, again, it's in front of you, right? So in front of your feet, you don't want to be sideways. Here we are. And I'm stepping with my opposite foot. Here we are. For my drop. Good. One more. I also like to have my opposite hand out for balance as well. 
Yes, and so you're getting a little bit more technical into it. I had my feet straight, but then once you have your feet square, then you can start doing the staggered stance. Here we are. Good. So then after we're done that, she's going to pick up our paddle and we're going to start getting into regular drops. Here we are. So now Michelle's going to hit her regular drop in the kitchen. And just keep on working on that type of beanbag toss. Good. Two more. And remember, and a successful drop is one that lands in the kitchen and your opponent cannot attack it out of the air. And a big thing That's with the, the feed, as I want you to know, I'm not smashing the ball at her. I'm trying to give her a feed that she can really work with to get this feel, to get this repetition and that consistency. That was not a good drop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, Michelle's going to come up to the kitchen and we're going to do the exact same thing. Another great thing that we can do is Michelle's gonna move up. I'm going to do one beanbag toss in, then I'm going to get my paddle and do one regular. So again, I'm going to do one beanbag toss in, and then I'm going to do one regular. Beanbag toss in, and one regular. Tons and tons of repetition. Now what we're going to do, our next favorite drill that we're going to use, once you get the form of doing it, the next thing that we're going to get into is our favorite, I think it's your favorite, the slinky drill. Do you wanna explain the slinky drill? Yes, so the slinky drill is something that you can do on court that's going to bring you from one part of the pickleball court to the next, and that's how you know that you've completed the drill. The one we were just doing with the beanbag toss, you wanna to set a timer and you wanna say, we're gonna do this for five, 10, 15 minutes, however much time that you have, that's gonna make it a little bit longer than you would have done before you got bored of doing it. Cause you don't ever wanna just do a couple and think that that's enough. We, we need lots and lots of repetitions to get your uh, brain and your muscle memory connected. So for the slinky drill, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at the kitchen and you're gonna hit a drop into your opponent's kitchen. And then as you hit that drop, the next thing you're gonna do is take a step back and then take another drop from a different position in the court. As you keep moving back, you're gonna keep going until you get to the baseline, and then you can work your way back up to the kitchen. And so it technically starts out as a dink, and the further back that you get, the more forward and up you need to hit. This is a great drill to really dial in. If I take time away from playing pickleball and I go back and I need to work on my drops, this is the drill that I do. Now for video purposes, even if we miss or we make it, we're going to still move back and then we're going to move up. But if you guys are actually drilling on court, I want you to not take a step back until you make the shot. And remind everybody, what is a successful drop? A drop is a ball that is in the kitchen. Right. So if your partner can take that ball out of the air, that was not the best drop. Yes. And Better that, than in the net, but still not ideal. And that's a big key, guys. I want you, when you're drilling, I would always have you go a little bit high, then go a little bit low. Don't end the point yourself. Let your opponent end the point. And what I mean by this, how many times have you been on the pickleball court that you had that smash and you end up missing? If I try to go for a perfect drop and I hit it in net, I 100% lose the point. There's no question about that. But if I pop the ball up in the air to Michelle, Okay, like probably she's going to make it, but there is going to be that small chance that she does miss the ball. So give yourself margin for error. When I aim for the drop, I try to go around here. I don't want to go super, super low. Now, when we do this drill, I want you to realize the person who is not moving back, they're trying to work with your partner, okay? Here's the thing, it's not gonna be perfect every single time. You're not right. gonna hit the best shot, but hey, that's what happens in pickleball, so it's good, but you're gonna to try to work with me. And especially on the first round. So a round is kitchen, baseline, back to kitchen. So that's your first round of slinking. Then when you get to maybe your fifth round, you're like, okay, work me a little bit harder. On the yes. fifth round, I'm gonna get more aggressive with my shots at the kitchen to make you work harder on your drop So increase the intensity. And yeah. big disclaimer, it is super windy today. Um, so what else is new? <laughs> yeah, right every time here we are. Let's go. So uh, do you want me to move back first? Yeah Okay, so I'm gonna start here and again every single time I make it but for this video purpose I'm gonna take a step back and the further I get back the more forward and up I want to go and I'm gonna go all the way back to the baseline Okay, I didn't want to hit the camera there. Here we are Good Here we are. What's your excuse for that one? I don't know <laughs> Okay, now once I get back to the baseline I'm now going to work my way back up to the kitchen. Here we are. 
Here we are. So after every single one, I'm going to move up. I feel a lot of pressure right now. I don't want to miss. All right, now you're up. Here we are. So now Michelle is going to take a step back every single time. Good. And remember, with these shots, you want to keep your feet planted before you hit them. You don't want to be moving as you hit a drop. It will take away the consistency. And always, as a partner, make sure you have another ball. When I'm up here just to make the drill go, I always have a couple of balls in my hand so she can really not take too much time between every shot, even if she misses. Good. Good. Good, now my turn. Yeah. And now she's going to up the intensity a little bit more. I'm trying to make contact out in front. Ooh, that's a hard one. The more are. you practice these drills, also the more you're gonna get a feel for yourself. And if you miss, you're gonna know why you missed. And I really think the drop is all about confidence and feel with your shots. The more confidence you get, the better you're going to be. Good. And for the slinky drill, we're trying to let these bounce first, but as you get more advanced in your game, you can start to take these out of the air. Whoops. <laughs> ah. We're done this slinky drill, uh -huh. which we just did. Now we're going to start really hitting the balls and rallying them out. Now, when we do a stroke, you are specifically working on your third shot. So what that means is I'm going to try to keep all of my shots deep. You're going to stay back. Technically, if you hit a good drop, what are you supposed to do? You're move supposed up to move to up. Kitchen. But in this situation, we're trying to get the maximum reps as much as possible. So you're going to stay back and just drop every single shot. And while I'm doing this, I can still make a mental note to myself. Michelle, if this was a match, I know I can move forward because you feel that drop coming nicely off your paddle. Let's move up but here. But for the purposes of us explaining our favorite drills today, I'm gonna to stay back and get as many reps as I can deep in the court. Yes. I feel like we always feel like we have to be at the net, but like when we're talking, we should always be like, I guess up here, cause it's closer. Yeah. Okay, so here's a big thing too, intensity, right? So at first I'm going to be going 50% at the net while Michelle's back. Then as she starts to get the feel, we're gonna start amping it up and I'm going to start to go for more bigger, aggressive shots. So first it becomes really comprehensive, but then as we amp up the intensity, I'm trying to be aggressive up at the kitchen and taking balls out of the air, which is a really good drill for itself if you wanna be more aggressive and attackable. I used to, when someone used to work on their drops, I'd be like, oh, okay, I just stand here and take the ball out of the air. No, I wanna be aggressive and really try to go for my shots. Are you ready? Yes, and Let's I'm gonna go. give you guys some tips as I'm doing this as to what is going through my brain and what I'm thinking about to make this an effective practice as well. Perfect, let's go. So you're gonna go all the way back there. I'm going to be up at the kitchen. I'm gonna feed the ball into her nicely. And again, I'm going, let's say 50%. I'm not trying to win the point. I'm just trying to give her reps. And as you saw right there, she did have to take the ball out of the air and that's going to be possible. And this is a timed drill. We're gonna do this for 10 minutes, no matter how many misses I have or how many successful shots I have. And when we drill 10 minutes total, but maybe we would do three minutes on this side. Then after we do three minutes on this side, what are you going to do? You're going to go over there and do three minutes on that side. So you wanna switch angles. You wanna go straight ahead, and then you wanna go diagonal on both sides. Fun fact for a drop shot, the best place to place it is right there in the middle of the court because the net is lower, and it's hard to attack for the other team. If I give Tyler a shot over there, he's gonna Ernie the crap out of it. And now what we're going to do is then after she did that, I would go over here and we would do the exact same drill. So now, after, say we get through it a little bit, right? I'm going to start amping up my intensity with my feeds and my hits. So we're gonna play right now. I'm gonna start going for it, right? Uh -huh. So instead of going 50%, maybe I'm going to go 70%. Try to be super aggressive. If it's high, I'll start putting it away. Oh. But he can't put away a shot if I hit a That's nice super drop. super low. Good. <sighs> And again, regardless of what shot she hits, she's staying back 
because we're trying to work on drops. If this was a game, what would she do? She would come up to the kitchen. And I'm noticing the ones that go higher that I miss, my contact is too close to my body. So I need to make sure that my, I make adjustments and I'm taking the ball out in front for the next few. And again, if it's high, I'm going to try to put it away now. <laughs> but see, that's over the net. So over the net is better than into the net. So and we're going to do the exact... My opponent or my partner would have taken care of that overhead. So we're going to do the exact same thing, okay? So you're going to be back and say we did all the sides. So now I'm going to do three minutes on every side myself. Ooh. And the harder I work him, the better he's going to play when we play together. So and again, if I pop it up, she's now going to put it away, right? Good. Oh no. <laughs> Too good. A couple more. <laughs> Three more. And the level at which this will make your pickleball increase is like, there's nothing better than this. Oh, that's a hard one. Here we are, two more. And I want you to notice when we started out with our drop drills, we started really controlled. Now, as we get advanced and we get more into it, we start to open it up, have less parameters. What I mean by that is at first, we didn't even use a paddle. We tossed the ball in. Right. We had to do this. Now, the further you get along or the more advanced you get, the more parameters that you take away. So now, she can swing hard, she can put the ball away, you could do whatever. And so, the icing on the cake for this though is to play out the point and move up when you recognize a good drop. Yes, so now getting into that, this is the next thing that we do. So all we're going to do is she's going to be back at the baseline, again, I'm gonna feed the ball in and we're going to play out the point. Now, here's the big thing. What we do before we actually play out real points we're going to play out the point, but you have to stay back at the baseline. So what does that mean? With me at the net, I can't hit you a super short shot because that'll be cheap, but you're going to be back at the baseline working on your drops. I'm going to be up at the kitchen and we're going to just play out the point. And I just have to wait for you to mess up. So yeah, your goal is to keep the ball low <laughs> uh -huh. and eventually have me miss. Right. My goal is to keep her going so I could eventually get a high shot and put the ball away. Now. Sometimes practicing with your husband, your partner, whoever it is you can find off the street that is willing to practice and get better at pickleball could be a little bit boring maybe. But here's the thing, if you make it competitive and if you say, okay, we're playing to three right now, every time I get a point, you explain the scoring system. So what I used to do when we'd play, because I'm just so much better at pickleballer <laughs> than my uh, wife. I would win in these drills like 11-0, 12-15-0. Not anymore. And when the game is 8-0, <laughs> regardless of how into pickleball you are, you're not going to try. You're going to be like, okay, they're up 8-0. You're going to get demoralized. So then this guy, Poongi, told me when we were drilling, because he was absolutely destroying me. Just kidding. But what was happening is instead of playing up to a certain number, you say first person to get three points. First person to win three shots in a row. Right. So this scoring system for drilling is so much better than playing up to a certain number because it doesn't get someone super down. So what I mean is if I, I win the first point, one zero. If I win the second point, two zero. Then if I lose that second point, we go back to zero. And then if Michelle wins, one zero, two zero. So it's the first person you have to win three consecutive points in a row. So regardless of level, if you can utilize this, it's going to make it so much more fun. Then after three points in a row, you're going to, okay, best out three. So if you win three points in a row, one, then that's one out three, three and twice, two out three, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go, here we are back there and we're going to play the points out. Now, who should win this? You should, I'm the trying to figure out how I'm gonna win this up right at now. The kitchen, I'm trying to right? really figure this because out. Because I'm in the best place, but what's the goal for her to work on her drops in a more realistic situation? Let's go, here we are. And a big thing too, we're only playing half court. I think we forgot to mention that. If you haven't realized that by now, so that would be out, I, I won the point, shot. right? So only half court, right? I wanted to make that disclaimer before you would start going for these cheap shots. Here we are. Good, all right, two zero May, right? So first to three. 
So here we are. I'm gonna explain that right now. I'll be a nice gentleman and here we are. Oh man, okay, so it was 2-0 me. What's the score now? 0-0 zero, zero because I lost the point. First person get three. Here we are, so now 0-0 zero, zero again. One, two? She ends my streak. I can't earn any because the slinger bag's in the way. Ah, oh, come on, you played it. Well, I was gonna say, should I let your shots go out? Of course. Oh. All right, here we are, one zero me. And notice how many high balls she has hit. And what happens with the point? She keeps on prolonging the point. Come over here real quick. This is a real big thing. I want you, if you can, re-watch the last couple points that we had. How many perfect drops did you have? Uh, like none. Okay, <laughs> did I end the point right away? No. No, I had to keep on playing out the point. Yeah. You don't have to make your drops super perfect every single time. If you don't make your drops perfect, your opponent isn't going to end the point every single time. And of course on YouTube right now, I want to absolutely destroy the pickle yogi right now. But if still. If there is one thing I want to leave you with from this pr drilling drop practice, it's number one, try to hit a drop. Just try it. Don't just drive everything. Yeah. Number two, get the ball over the net, not into the net. And then number three, learn from your mistakes and try to improve your accuracy last. Yep. Because that's how you stay in the point. 100%. All right, let's, uh, let's get you up there. Let get, let's get me back there. I'll give that one to you. We'll say that you, you got the W. Congratulations. And here, let's do a diagonal now, okay? So we're gonna do a diagonal. Oh, so you can have more space than I had? <laughs> and here we are, let's go. Again, so for your funny. drilling sessions, always make sure that you have a ton of balls. It makes it and so music. much easier. Because if you don't have a ton of balls, you're gonna just try to get them in. Be super tentative because you don't wanna pick up the balls. Here we are, let's go. So we're gonna play now, it's half court, but it's diagonal now, right? It's diagonal over here. Oh, and no lobs too, lobs are cheap. Good. And again, I'm not going to win the point unless she messes up. So what does this mean? It's going to give me tons of reps. Look, I popped it up high, that's okay. Because they're not always going to end the point. Oh shoot, that's a good one. Come on, miss, no! All right, one zero, yeah. And she's working on, again, being aggressive. All right, two zero you, has to win three in a row. All right. A good place to put these roll volleys at the kitchen too is at their person's feet. You yeah. can aim there. Why? It's just, you know, they get jammed up and they we don't make contact out in front. Yes. So what'd you say? So when you're at the kitchen, you're playing or you're doing this drill, the best place to aim your shots is at your opponent's feet because they're gonna get jammed up and there's no space to make good contact out in front. And you want distance when you're hitting your drop. You wanna make contact out in front, away from your body. You don't wanna get super close because then you're gonna end up popping the ball up super high and you're not going to have a lot of leverage and you're going to miss that ball in the net. Mm -hmm. So now, after we're done that, now what are we going to do? We're actually going to play out the point. So we're gonna do straight ahead now, mm -hmm. okay? And we're going to play out the point. So now, it's the exact same drill but what's going to happen is the person back here in the transition zone or dropping is going to be able to move up. Now here's the thing, you always want to move up when there's a good drop. If there is not a good drop, you want to stay back. So that's why at the beginning of the video, the pickle yogi, Michelle said what? It can be the third, it can be the fifth, it can be the 29th thousandth drop. But what's important is that you recognize that it's good and you communicate with your teammate when you're playing and you move up together. Because if one person moves up on a bad drop, like I used to do, remember Naples? You're like, you gotta stop moving up yes. on these bad drops. You're gonna lose the point. So it's essential to recognize a good drop at the right time and you will get totally sauced up or you'll watch me get sauced up if I move up on a bad drop because he's gonna put it away at my feet behind me. Let's go, here we are. First three. So let's see what happens. So technically this drill Let's pause, it's called 7-Eleven doubles. Yeah, so we're gonna play first to three, or you could play this 7-Eleven, or you could make it any. The whole goal though, is this person has to get to 11 before that person gets to seven. The person back should have it easier than the person up at the net, because it is way easier for the person at the net to win the point. And I'll say that one more time, okay. because that was right. The person back should have it way easier than the person at the net, because 
that person back there, it's way more difficult for them to win the points Not than the person up at the kitchen. It's harder. You should have it easier. Scoring wise, you should be able to no, get to a less you're number to win. Be before I'm here. Yeah, so that's why I said that. It's not easier. Let's you go. have an advantage. You should have an easier score. That's why you My have to score get to seven is easier before you have the I have to get to 11. My and score. I don't want to get all these YouTube comments how I'm just so mean to you. No, but you got to understand <laughs> well, you how said the game works. It's easier works. for me. It's way harder for me back here. The score should be easier. That's yeah, why you should get it's to seven. For me. And that's why I'm sh I should get to 11. So we're going to play it out. Here we are. We'll play uh, 3 5, okay? So. <laughs> Like your pickleball score because you're a three five. Oh no, I'm just Ooh. kidding. Isn't there something like three five for life? Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool shirt. Alright, so here's what's gonna happen. Michelle has to get the up. three before I get the five. I'm gonna feed the ball in, has to be a nice feed, no lobs, super windy, anything goes half the court. Alright, one zero mate. That was the wind. Here we are. It blew the ball right away from three, my Three five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one, one. Okay, so here we are. It's one, one. Feed. If you miss a feed, we technically redo it, but we're not going to redo it for this video purpose. And see, I moved up. I had two beautiful drops, and as soon as I saw that, I took a step up. Let's go. Here we are. And two, I didn't one, just run up to the kitchen blindly. I had to take a second one. <sighs> two, two. I have to get to five before she gets to three, so it's technically game point. All right, here we are. Three, two. <sighs> three, two, me. <laughs> yes! Come on! That was my Go. face! 3-3. Three, three. That was literally <laughs> my three, three. face, Tyler. Come on. <laughs> no, it's 3-2 me, right? Or is it? Yeah, 3-2 me. Here we are. That's a good point. 4-3 me. You lies That's my partner's ball. The court. Game point. There we are. All right. So that was the game. I got the five before she got the three. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to switch up the angle. So you're going to be over there. I'm going to be over here and we're going to play diagonal. I'm going to go back now because I'm back and you're up. I have to get to five. I have to get the three before you get the five. So here we are. Let's go. Anything goes. Let's go. Here we are. Zero, zero. Is this a Franklin? I don't know. Good. And as you saw there, why did I move up? I moved up because I saw her get the ball low. If the ball's high, you want to stay back. If the ball's low, you want to move up. All right, two zero, mate. Two one, mate. Two, three, one, mate. Oh, that's game. Whatever. Here, last point. Oh, all right. Good. So that's our drilling. All right. So after you've done that, if you want to take it even more advanced, what you're going to do is you're going to have your opponent up at the kitchen start out with a smash shot. Now, smash shot isn't going to be a hundred percent smash. Don't get me wrong, but it's going to be like this. Watch. Ready? So it's going to be like this. It's going to put your partner that you're training with on even a more defensive position and have to have them dig out of it. And it's going to have you work on your putaways. Yes. So here we are. So we're going to start again and we're going to play out Straight the point. Straight ahead, okay. The person's going to smash the ball. I'll smash. You want to smash it to me? Yeah. All right. You have to be nice, okay? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, it's okay to lose. Here we are. Smash the ball in. And go. So we play it out again, and I have to try to defend it. Here's the thing. The person back here is probably going to miss a ton of points and lose a ton of points because their wife is going to absolutely beat them. But the whole goal is to get better, okay? So it doesn't matter if you win or lose in this drill. So again, she's going to smash the ball at me, and I'm going to then play it out, and anything goes. Oh, play it. Get in. Ow. Uh, all right, here we are. Do it again. Do it again. Come on. Hustle up. 
Are you telling me to hustle up? Let's go. Oh, that's so windy. That's in. <laughs> Out. All right. So that's another type of drill that you can do. I'm not done. I want to keep doing it. So this is our drilling session that we go through. I love that we got to film a YouTube video, explain it for all you, but also this is exactly what we would be doing yeah. if we were working on drills. And then I'd go home in the car looking out the window the whole time because you beat me. <laughs> but then I get better, so it's fine. And here's the thing, you beat me too. Uh, but that's why, again, I really stress uh, a ton to do that up to three, not like 7-Eleven, three, five, or whatever you call it. Now, if you can utilize these drills or even just a couple of these drills, again, the beginning of this video was for more beginner, intermediate learning the technique. And understanding the form. Yes, and, the and again, limiting the amount of variables that had it. And then as you advance, you understand the form, and then it's more into repetition. And then once you get past the repetition to put yourself in various situations, that you have to do to utilize your and drops. Then you have the experience. So when you're playing a match, you're like, oh my gosh, how did that drop just land in the kitchen so beautifully? It wasn't magic, it was your dedication and work. Guys, practice does not make perfect, practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. Repetition over and over and over again. If I do not drill on my drops, I will not be good when I go play pickleball at my drops. You have to put yourself in multiple positions. Again, and switch it up, okay? If you go straight ahead, do diagonal. If you do diagonal, do the other side. One other thing I forgot to mention. When I was doing slinky or we were playing skinny singles or 7 and doubles, notice not once did I take a drive. The purpose is not to just forget everything you're working on and just hit the ball as hard as you can. Like there's sometimes in a match when a drive is appropriate, but when you are drilling, you do the drill. Yes. And the drill is to drop the ball every single time. Yes. Until I get to the kitchen, then I dink and a couple speed ups, maybe put aways if they're there, but I'm not initiating a drive at the baseline. Yes. And if you have a foursome that you're playing with and that you want to get better at pickleball and improve your drops, maybe go out and tell yourself, Every single person has to drop the ball. They can't drive. That's something that we do at Universal Rackets when we're working on drops during that day of our clinics is we say, hey, you guys are going to play a normal point, but no drives are allowed. You are only allowed to drop the ball. So even if you don't have a foursome, if you're just with yourself, maybe at an open play and you feel comfortable with your drops, just say, okay, win or lose, I'm going to drop every single ball. And that's actually what I did right. when I had trouble. Also, um, it is fine to choose a drop over a drive anytime during the point. You're yeah. never gonna lose a point because you chose to drop the ball instead of driving. Yeah. And that could be a whole nother YouTube video of when to drop and when to drive. Yeah. But a lot, a couple balls that you gave me were a little bit shallow and they were a little bit high and I could have driven them, but for the drill, I dropped them. Yes. So I really like those earrings. What, Thank you. you got some pickleball earrings from this same person. What, what's the name of it? You don't know? Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We'll find it. We'll put the link in the description. Yeah. Uh, she got amazing pickleball. They're so cute. Look at these things. Go up to the camera and show them. It's, I really like her earring. She looks all pretty. That's why I took it easy on her today. They match my shoes. If you guys want to get any amazing Selkirk paddles, Selkirk gear, I have the uh, crew neck sweatshirt on right now. I have the Halo Control 60 millimeter XL, a little bit colorful. She's got the Project 006. Make sure to click the link in her description. Use our code ADV-Universal. Once again, ADV-Universal at checkout, and you will get a gift card with your purchase. Now, you don't get anything off your actual purchase, but it's so amazing, because if you get a paddle, you can get balls. If you get your paddle, you can get a hat, you can get some more swag and more gear when you hit the courts. If you have any community like this and you need pickleball programs, you need pickleball instructors, you need pickleball fundraiser, corporate events, or anything, our goal at Universal Rackets is to scale all over the country with our inclusive pickleball programs. If you think that you have an opportunity for us to come to you wherever you are in the world right now watching this video, fill out the form in the description and a Universal Rackets representative will get back to you that week and we'll get us scheduled out to come to you. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know in the comments below. Share this with a friend. Use these drills if you've got through this video. Don't just watch us go out and utilize this stuff in actual play. Practice on it. Subscribe to us. Follow us. Share with us. All that stuff. And we'll see you guys next time on court. Have a good one. Happy hitting. Work on your drops. Become a better player. And beat more people and win more points. See you guys later. <laughs>